All right, in this video, we're going to move from basic inheritance into polymorphism. So I'm going to build off of what we did in the last video. Here we have our item class. That was our base class for everything. And from item, we extended weapon. And from weapon, we extended sword. And we're going to copy this and create a few more different weapons. So I'm just going to copy the sword here to make this fast. And we'll paste it and we'll just make some changes here. Instead of sword, we're going to type that is a spear. And then we can change up the values here. Instead of iron sword, we will say this is a bamboo spear. And you can change these other values too if you want to, just to keep it interesting. And this must also be changed to spear. We'll go ahead and do that one more time. We've got a sword, a spear, let's add a battle axe. And just copy and paste. And we'll give it a unique name. Battle axe of doom. Should have way more damage if it's a battle axe of doom. <clears throat> There we go. Now we have three different subclasses of weapon. And by extension, we have three different specific items. And we could take this a little bit further. Let's say not all of the items are weapons. Let's add tools. And so I'm going to add a class for tools. And I'm just copying and pasting this in there. And you can pause the video if you want to look at it. And follow along. This class extends from items. So tools are not weapons, but they are items. And then I've added a durability property here. I've got a default constructor and I've got a three argument constructor similar to the weapon class. And then I have a display method also similar to the weapon class. We will call the base class display and then we will print the durability as well. And with tool being our new subclass of item, we can extend from tool. So I'm just going to add a pickaxe. We have a class pickaxe extends tool. The pickaxe is going to have a constructor here and I've just called it rusty pickaxe with a 3000 durability. And then we have our standard three argument constructor there. That is enough classes and subclasses to get the polymorphism working. What these all have in common is they all have a display method. Some are inherited, some have specific display methods, but they all have a display method. And what polymorphism is going to allow us to do is going to allow us to create an array of just items. We don't have to specify what kind of item they are once they are in that array. The polymorphism will work to determine which version of display needs to be called whether it's the base class item or it's all the way down at the very bottom with one of the weapons that we created or the pickaxe we created. So to test that out, let's head over to main. And the first thing I'm going to do here is create an array of items. I'm going to call it inventory. we'll say we've got 10 different items in our inventory. The next thing we need to do is fill this inventory with different items. And instead of hard coding all of this, I'm going to let the computer do it for me. And so to do that, I'm going to need a random number. I will create a random, I'll call that R equals new random. And you will need to fix the imports here to include java.util.random up at the top. Next, I'm going to create a for loop, and this will be based on the size of the inventory. I'm not gonna hard code the 10, because if I wanna change it, 
to more items, I would only have to change it right here. So to do that, we do inventory.link and I++. Now inside this for loop, I'm going to roll a random number. And so I will use an integer. We'll just call this num equals r dot next int. And I have four different objects. So I'm going to put a four in there and that will give me a random number including zero through three. The next thing I'm going to do is create a switch. And this switch will be based on that random number. And so we will have four cases. Each one of these needs a break statement. But starting with our first case here, we're going to say if our random number is zero, then our inventory item sub i equals a new sword and break. I'm just going to copy this and paste it. And so if our random number is a one, we will get a spear. If it's a two, we get a battle ax. And if it's a three, we get a pickaxe. There we go, our for loop will run 10 times, create a random number each time, and assign a random item to each spot in the inventory. And then to test this out, we'll create another for loop here, and I'm gonna make this an auto loop. You don't have to use an auto loop, but if you're only displaying, if you're only reading from the array, you can use an auto loop. And this is going to be reading an array of items I will just call that in, and that array is inventory. And then I can just say in dot display, and to keep it looking good, we'll add a new line that will make it a little easier to read the output. And this will go through our array and call display on every item in there. And the polymorphism will look down the chain of inheritance and it will find the best version of display, whatever matches the object at that point in the array, and it will call that version of display for us. And we don't have to have any if statements. We don't have to check and see if it's a sword or a pickaxe or whatever. The polymorphism will do that for us. So let's see if it works. And it works just fine. And your output may be a little different than mine because you probably got different random numbers. We have a battle axe, a spear, another battle axe. And it looks like we got one from every category. At least one from every category. So that is one way of using polymorphism. Another example might be employees. Let's say you have a company with a lot of different employees. Let's say you have salary employees. Um, you could have hourly employees, you could have commission-based employees, and all of these employees would have their paychecks calculated differently. And so you would write a calculate method for each subclass of employee, and then you could have an array of employees, and then call calculate instead of display on each one of those, and polymorphism would go to whatever type of employee that was, and calculate their pay accordingly. So it allows you to streamline a whole lot of objects that are from the same base class without having to write um, a lot of extra if statements, which is a very powerful and convenient tool to have in a programming language.